144Hz refresh rate achieved on the Samsung S95B QD OLED, 175Hz refresh rate achieved on the 34-inch Alienware QD OLED monitor, but these refresh rate figures have now been surpassed by a game-changing 240Hz OLED screen. Of course, given that YouTube's maximum frame rate is 60 frames per second, and you are unlikely to be watching on a display with 240Hz refresh rate, there is no way this test UFO footage can convey just how good the motion sharpness is. Undoubtedly the clearest and cleanest motion I've seen from any modern display, and I include plasma televisions in this statement. So to give you some idea, I've shot a 1000 frames per second slow motion video of this groundbreaking OLED screen running at 240Hz side by side versus an Alienware QD OLED monitor running at 175Hz, and despite the low resolution caused by filming at such a high frame rate, hopefully you can appreciate just how clear and smooth the moving UFOs looked on the 240Hz OLED compared to even the Alienware QD OLED monitor which maxed out at 175Hz. And yes, in real life without slow motion, the improvement was noticeable to my eyes too. By now, the more clued up among you may have guessed that the 240Hz OLED display is the 15.6 inch screen on the MSI GE67 HX gaming laptop, marketed as the world's first 240Hz OLED laptop screen. The 240Hz OLED panel is supplied by Samsung Display, who seems to understand how to strike the right balance between resolution and refresh rate. So the QHD resolution of 2560 x 1440 makes perfect sense given that not many graphics card, let alone a laptop GPU, can drive 240 frames per second at higher resolution. The Spectral Power Distribution or SPD showed beautifully distinct red, green, and blue waveforms, allowing for an impressively white color gamut in HDR mode covering almost 100% of DCI-P3 in UV terms, and 81% of RAC 220. In fact, the SPD of this 240Hz OLED panel looked quite similar to the SPD of Samsung Display's OLED screens on recent iPhones. The subpixel structure is not your regular RGB stripe, so should you choose to use 100% scaling on the laptop, fine text may appear less sharp due to unwanted fringing prompting us to revert to the default recommended scaling setting of 150%. Thanks to OLED's supremely high contrast and the screen's glossy finish which improves perceived sharpness, we personally don't think this is an issue at all for playing games. Talking about the screen coating on this 240Hz OLED panel, it is not as grey as that on QD OLEDs when hit by light, although it is more reflective and doesn't go as black as a MacBook Pro in a brighter environment. In SDR mode, maximum luminance reached 380 nits full screen, so it should be bright enough for most conditions. Movie mode in the MSI True Color app was the most accurate out of the box for watching SDR movies in a dark room, since it targeted 2.4 gamma and Rec 709 colors. Although, like in all picture presets on the MSI GE67 HX, the grayscale carried a green tinge which most laptop users probably won't notice outside of a side-by-side -side comparison against a reference display. Note that once you decrease brightness from the maximum value of 100, particularly to obtain 100 or 120 nits for SDR viewing in a dark room, near black gamma would be darkened, leading to more crushing of shadow detail. Some users may prefer to use the sRGB preset which targets 2.2 gamma to see more shadow detail in SDR content. For HDR, peak brightness measured 600 nits on a 10% window and 450 nits full fill, with a slightly over-brightened EOTF tracking compared to the ST2084PQ or perceptual quantization standard. However, that's far from the biggest problem with HDR on the MSI laptop, because we had great difficulty in getting the correct HDR10 transfer function to be applied consistently on our MSI GE67 HX review sample, with the latest NVIDIA Game Ready driver installed at the time we filmed this video in August 2022. For example, once we engaged HDR mode in Windows 11, then fired up Dirt 5 which supports HDR, the picture looked extremely washed out with no HDR impact whatsoever. 
although interestingly, the thumbnail preview on the taskbar appeared to have the correct HDR mapping. Playing Halo Infinite in HDR also manifested a similar behavior, with the full screen presentation looking wrong, but the taskbar thumbnail preview looking good. During playback of my own HDR10 video using VLC, I could restore correct PQ mapping by pausing the video and not going full screen, but it would flicker in and out of PQ, making it a no-go. Playing the same video in HDR on YouTube through Google Chrome seemed to render correctly, although Netflix appeared to be limited to SDR only both through the browser and the Microsoft Store app. After we checked a number of Netflix titles that are definitely in HDR or Dolby Vision on other platforms. When playing games, we would certainly switch off HDR in Windows and stick to SDR, which still looked stunning thanks to OLED's true blacks, vibrant colors, wide viewing angles, and super clean motion. By using a 1 nanosecond photo detector connected to an oscilloscope to measure how fast the pixels switched from black to white, and vice versa, we recorded a pixel response time of around 0.6 milliseconds based on the industry standard of 10% to 90% rise time, which is insanely fast. Because I don't normally review laptops, the only laptop I have for comparison is my own M1 Max MacBook Pro which is capable of running at 120Hz ProMotion on its IPS LCD screen. As you can see even from this 60fps footage, the 240Hz OLED screen on the MSI GE67HX was simply smoother and clearer with no smearing or ghosting artifacts, and to drive home OLED's superiority, here's a slow motion footage of the laptops running the test UFO clip side by side. Two screen refresh rates are offered on the MSI GE67HX, namely 60Hz and 240Hz. We don't see any reason why anyone should deviate from selecting 240Hz which is the USP of this laptop. To reach 240Hz refresh rate, you should keep the GE67HX plugged into a power source, otherwise the laptop may drop to 60Hz on battery power without prior warning or notification. Of course, to obtain the highest motion clarity, the source video frame rate needs to be 240fps also, which is within the capabilities of the inbuilt GeForce RTX 3070 Ti laptop GPU as long as you are willing to sacrifice resolution. Using Halo Infinite as an example, if we stayed at the default resolution of 2560x1440, the in-game frame rate would be capped at around 140fps. It is only when we decreased the in-game resolution to the lowest permitted that 240fps was possible. Even though the MSI GE67HX doesn't support NVIDIA G-Sync, there is some form of VRR support ranging from 48Hz to 240Hz to reduce tearing and frame skipping. As you can see from the fluctuating frame rates in the FPS counter at the top right of the screen. Circling back to the oscillogram, the eagle-eyed among you may have spotted PWM or pulse width modulation at play. Yes, the 240Hz OLED laptop screen runs with 480Hz PWM at all times, even at maximum brightness but we think 480Hz PWM is high enough not to cause problems for most people. Next, gaming lag. But before that, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Since the pandemic started, some streaming providers including Netflix have throttled the bitrate of certain shows, especially in Europe, resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix at higher bit rates with better picture quality. You can also get more content that's not available in your region, perhaps the US Netflix library which contains more movie titles. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTV Test, you'll get 83% off, as well as 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I will put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Using an NVIDIA LDAT device, 
we measured end-to-end -end system latency on the MSI GE67HX to average below 20 milliseconds, which is a super responsive result, considering that this figure takes into account the mouse click, CPU processing, operating system, game application, GPU rendering, and finally the display, so it's a different metric to the usual input lag number published by reviewers. To give you some perspective, Using the same methodology, we have previously measured more than 40 milliseconds of average end-to-end -end system latency on LG OLED televisions. Otherwise, the OLED laptop screen on the MSI GE67HX reproduced full 444 chroma, and even though color depth was capped to 8-bit at 240Hz, we did not notice any significant posterization in this display HDR test pattern, thanks to NVIDIA's deterring techniques. Bright uniformity was good on the whole, with no significant bending or dirty screen effect, but off-center, whites would gradually take on a yellow tint, with some rainbow effect at extreme angles. Dark uniformity was generally cleaner than WRGB OLEDs. At low luminance, we saw some thin horizontal streaks, as well as a mildly brighter stripe near the center, but given that laptops are rarely used in a pitch black room, especially for playing games, we don't think it is an issue for the majority of owners. For most potential buyers, the main concern will be OLED's propensity to develop permanent burn-in after displaying static elements such as taskbar and icons over a prolonged period of time. To reduce the risk of image retention and permanent screen burn, you can select the Features tab in the MSI Center app and click on MSI OLED Care where the company has provided a host of useful toggles such as idle screen saver, pixel shifting, taskbar auto hiding, and dark mode, not to mention a screen refresh function that will play a 30 second video clip that also serves to demonstrate the perfect blacks and vibrant colors on the OLED screen. To test for image retention, we displayed a peak white window for 10 seconds then switch to a full field gray slide, and hopefully you can see, despite YouTube's compression, that there's a darker rectangle in the center where the window occupied, which interestingly is the opposite of the brighter after image observed on WRGB OLEDs and QD OLEDs. Given the results, we're somewhat surprised by MSI's decision not to switch on at least some of the OLED care functions from factory by default requiring manual user intervention to apply extra protection. Let's sum up. In spite of some flaws, the 240Hz OLED screen on the MSI GE67HX laptop delivers the clearest, smoothest, and cleanest motion we've seen on a consumer display so far, as long as the source frame rate is equally high, and provided you can look past its relatively small screen size and the fairly loud fan noise from the laptop. Various motion enhancement technologies have been developed over the years to reduce motion blur and improve motion clarity, but each approach comes with its own downsides. Motion interpolation would introduce interpolation artifacts especially in complex moving sequences, not to mention increased input lag substantially due to heavier processing. Black frame insertion or BFI would cause flicker and darken the HDR presentation too much. Impulse type displays such as CRTs and plasmas remain highly regarded as far as motion clarity is concerned, but they have been discontinued for at least a decade now and won't be compatible with HDR. And let's not forget plasma television is not without its own motion issues such as green phosphor trails and dynamic force contouring. The MSI GE67HX convinced me that the most pristine motion sharpness can only come from very high source frame rate matched with very high refresh rate, and hopefully this 240Hz OLED screen will herald the introduction of larger 240Hz OLEDs in the near future. One thing I haven't done in this video is to compare the 240Hz OLED screen against a 360Hz or even 480Hz LED LCD monitor, but OLED's motion advantage over LED LCD goes beyond mere refresh rate figures, as I've demonstrated in this OLED vs LCD side-by-side -side comparison video you can watch by clicking here.